Oh, it must be dawn. Oh, oh. I guess so. And we must be nearly there. Somewhere, out there in the dark, is Scotland. We've come a long way together to get here. Yeah. Let's hope it was worth it. There's something I've been meaning to say to you, Nico. Is this the right time and place, Josh? There might not be another time. I don't want to waste this chance. You don't need to say anything. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. But here, with you, now. You're exhausted. Why don't you get some sleep? Sleep? At a time like this? Excited, huh? Would you like something to help you sleep, dearie? I've got some tablets in my bag. Oh, no. Thank you. Thanks all the same, ma'am. I've still got the clown's nose. So I see. You should throw it away, George. The old lady reminded me of my grandmother. Except, of course, that this old lady was still alive. Pardon me. Yes, my dear. Do you know what time we're due in Sterling? A quarter to six, but we're running eight minutes late. What's the book you're reading? Oh, it's something I picked up at the station. A medieval detective story. Quite well written for that kind of thing. It's been out of print for years. What's the title of the book? The Crooked Crusader Caper by Molly Pegram. I assumed the author was a woman, but apparently not. His real name is... Professor Nigel Pegram. That's right. Do you know him? No, I never met him. Georges is a great fan of his, though. Do you know Sterling well? Yes, I do. Is that where you two lovebirds abound? Yeah, we... It's one of the places we thought we'd stay on our holiday. Be sure to visit the castle, won't you? Oh, I'm sure it's a neat place. But we are not really interested in history, are we, George? Uh, no. I suppose espresso bars and boogie-woogie are more your cup of tea. That's right. There's nothing George enjoys more than a good boogie. Is there a church called St. Ninian's at Sterling? Yes, there is. And I know why you're going there. You do? Of course I do. It's obvious you're in love. You're eloping. And they say romance is dead. Would you believe that this clown's nose led us to being on this train tonight? I would indeed. No, honestly, it... You would? Certainly. You have an honest face. Where are you going, Josh? Do I need to spell it out? Don't snap at me! If you're going to take a leak, why don't you say so? Okay, I'm going to take a leak. L E A K. Tickets, please. Oh, hi. That's a standard full price peak return. Don't you have a senior citizen's rail card? I rarely travel by train. My ticket is perfectly valid, is it not? Well, yeah, but you could have saved up to a third of the cost. I do not need to indulge in puffling thriftiness. Blimey, you're a funny old bird and no mistake. Tickets, please, sir. Here. Off to Sterling, eh? Yes, we are. Well, I hope you won't be disappointed. It's a miserable place this time of year. Still, there's plenty of pubs and a lovely view from the castle. Thank you. I don't want to worry you, but 
There was something familiar about that guy. Are you sure? You're tired. Perhaps you're mistaken. Hmm. Maybe. But I didn't like the look in his eyes when he spoke to you. Can't you sit still, Georges? I need to go to the John. While you're there, check out the buffet car, George. Unthinkable though it is, I am hungry enough to eat English food. Okay. The door was locked. Smoking car. Okay, maybe he did scare me. It got worse. I suddenly realized who the conductor had reminded me of. Anthony. I really didn't want to shoot the breeze with this guy. Guido was still looking pretty menacing. I should have known better than to leave Nico and the old lady alone. Suddenly, the sword of Baphomet took second place to finding the girl I loved. His face was blotched and unshaven. I guess he'd been traveling all night. Red-rimmed eyes stared fish-like above his broken nose. Hi! Having a party? No! This is Brutus! Come on, join us, man! We're Basha! Wake up, man! What's company? His breath was like the outlet from a chemical factory. Excuse my mate, he's taking a nap. Sleeping like a bobby. I'd wake him up. When we get to Newcastle. We passed through Newcastle half an hour ago. And I never noticed. Did you see what happened to the young woman in the next compartment? No, Paula Divin, have you lost her like? She's disappeared. The old lady, too. I think they're in trouble. Oh, we am on an old lady, too. Yeah. You gotta help me. Maybe they went to the toilet, like? I don't think so. They never go on their own. I was in pairs, you know? No, she's been abducted, I'm sure. I've got to go look for her. What's stopping you, pal? The conductor. He's not what he seems. You want to avoid him, like? That's about it, yeah. No problem. Listen, I need your help. What's the matter? There's a guy on this train who's trying to kill me. Relax, man. He wouldn't try nothing with us in Basharia. We are veterans, like. So action at Breitling Sea. I don't recall the British Army being involved in a conflict at anywhere called Breitling Sea. Well, you just check it from me, pal. You're in safe hands. What is that stuff you're drinking? It smells like gasoline. Why? I'll put hairs in your chest, like. And your eyeballs, too, by the looks of you. Would you like a red nose? No, thanks, pal. I got one of my own. See you later. All I could see of the man's face was a massive purple bruise around his eye. It was a strange contrast with his flaming red hair, which stuck out in stiff, greasy tufts. I didn't want to wake him. To be frank, without a cold water hose, I didn't think I could wake him. Divin, do it, pal! Don't jump! I don't intend to jump. I'm going to climb on top of the train. You're kidding, aren't you? Just watch me. 
Hold on now, pal. I'll give you a hand, like. saved our lives, but why? We were always on the same side. Stobart, different causes, but a common enemy. The Knights Templar? Don't call them that. The real Templars were a noble foe. These uh, barbarians have no right to that name. These men are no better than dogs. What are the Neo Templars after? What is the Sword of Baphomet? Not what you think, my friend. It is a weapon, yes, but one which our enemies will find difficult to wield. A double-edged sword. A power older than Timole, older than Solomon. We'll stop them. You and me together. And Nico. No, George. My journey ends soon at the Garden of Paradise. You're talking in riddles. Can't you tell me straight what they're after? The sword symbolizes a colossal energy caused by the alignment of the Earth's natural power fields. Which are focused at St. Ninians. The energy endowed the Templars with the power which made them great. A power which made them charismatic to such an extent they could control the will. How did you escape from the bull's head? It is a long walk from the cliff of the bull to the village, Stobart. Fortunately, I know the ways of the wilderness. Also, I have a sister who keeps a garage just around the corner. Hmm, maybe not. May Allah guide you to our enemies. Thanks. One last thing. What? What is it? He's dead. Underneath that heap of tumbled crates was Eklund. I wasn't about to help him out. Underneath that heap... Nico looked good, even in ropes. Nico looked good even in ropes. The head of the axe glinted invitingly. I could hack Eklund into tiny pieces and feed him to the wolves. Where do you think you're going? Don't worry, I hadn't forgotten about you. Answer me this instant, Jean Stobart. I will, when I'm ready. No. You took advantage while my hands were tied. When Eklund pointed that gun at me, I thought I was going to die. I thought of all the things I'd never get to do. And kissing you was at the top of my list. George? Uh-huh? George, we've got to get off the train. Eklund could recover at any time. So what are we waiting for? Don't even think about it, George. What? Who? Look me straight in the eye and tell me you weren't thinking of using that axe on Eklund. Oh, come on. You think I'd kill a man in cold blood? Of course not. I just don't trust you not to cut your own stupid foot off. What are you doing? I'm out of here. Not that door. Do you want to end up like Flap? Not especially. 
What remains of him is well on his way back to London. I hope he was traveling on a return ticket. I'd feel happier if we had a gun or something. Khan gave me something. What? His handbag. Oh, great. If we run into any killers, we can give him a good buffeting. Didn't he have any weapons? You don't know half of it. This bag's full of C4. Wow. Why didn't you say so? Boy, we'll show him now. What's C4? Plastic, Josh. We're going to shop our way to victory? Two kilos of plastic explosive. The detonator's broken now. No problem. We'll buy a box of matches somewhere. It doesn't work that way. It takes a small explosion to start the big explosion. Well, that's not much use then. What does that sign say? Apparently, during the English Civil War in the mid-17th century, this place was used as an arms dump. Yeah? What happened? Look at the state of this place, Josh. You work it out. Oh, stray spark? You got it. The tower was the only thing to survive the blast. I hope the explosion didn't destroy the Sword of Baphomet. Do you? I rather hope it did. It was just about recognizable as the church I'd seen reflected in the chalice. Templars, roundheads and cavaliers. This place has seen a lot of history. I tried pushing the panel, but wasn't surprised when it failed to move. Above the carved cross was an indecipherable inscription. For all I knew, it could have been scribed in Gaelic. The stone face of the demon grinned with a horribly lifelike expression. It was so realistic, I could imagine the sculptor carving it from a live model. Examining the demon more closely, I realized something about its face. It was a clever illusion. No matter where I stood, the eyes weren't looking at me. There was a simple reason. The demon didn't have any eyes. It was a simple cog arrangement with a handle to turn the larger wheel. The handle turned easily and the larger wheel began to revolve. Damn! Then the handle came off in my hand. Now that the handle was gone, it was easy to remove the cog and spindle. It was a heap of stones and stuff which had tumbled down from the rafters. I scrabbled around in the rubble and found an old clay pipe with a broken stem. Under one of the stones, I found a metal coin which was green with age. It was caked with soil, but what I'd found was a small cog and spindle. With mounting excitement, I felt something between my fingers. It was short, hard, and black. Something I hadn't expected to find here. It was a plastic pentop. I didn't find anything.
The cog slipped neatly into the eye socket. With a rasp of metal on stone, I eased the second eye into place. I pushed the handle into the demon's mouth. The cogs all meshed. I began to turn. As soon as I saw the flickering torches, I realized the bogus Templars had beaten us to the sword. But where were they now? And why was it so quiet? The torch burned with a sickly dim glow and a stench like fire and brimstone. It was definitely gunpowder, but it had solidified over the centuries it had lain here undisturbed. Definitely hear chanting. You're right. I hear it too. What do you suppose they're doing? It wouldn't surprise me if they were holding some kind of satanic sex ritual. So, what are we waiting for? Shh! Befomet. Labino was right. This place was ancient even to the Templars. This whole place? This is Befomet? Finally, the truth. The Templars had never worshipped this graven image. No more than they'd worship a rainbow. But, like a rainbow, they regarded it as a symbol of a covenant with God, who'd revealed this place to them. Rosso! Why is it double dealing treacherous? On the contrary. Inspector Rosso has been the model of obedience. An important quality in a true Templar. Now be quiet and watch if you wish to live much longer. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here to witness the reforging of the sword that was broken. Here before God's sentinel, Baphomet. Master, a knight of Baphomet, we salute and pledge our obedience to you! I salute you, gatekeeper of the temple. Seven centuries ago, our greatest weapon, the sword of Baphomet, was lost to us. Now we prepare to reforge it, to wield against new enemies. As the tired millennium dies, and this world looks for new leaders, we shall not fail. We shall lead the people to a new order, wherein all borders will dissolve. All will be united under the Red Cross of the Templars.
have watched your efforts to stop us with respect. But surely you realize that you have been misled by our enemies. Both of us want a better world. Fortunately, no harm has been done. We need determined, resourceful men like you. Join us, George. Join us in true brotherhood. Yeah, true. Wait, brothers? What about Marquet? What about Pegram and Klausner? You didn't look on them as brothers, only as failures. Three men dead, and you don't give a damn! George, you know that sacrifices are necessary. Every great undertaking. Join you. I'll see you in hell first. Oh, George, I had great hopes for you. C'est la guerre. Eglund. Kill him. If it isn't the great detective and his beautiful assistant, it's going to be a pleasure killing the pair of you. Josh, what are we going to do? Come on, Nico, we're leaving. You fools, you cannot escape us. Guido! Stop But master, the powder! That powder is from the English Civil War! You... He saw her 300 years old! Or, in her handbag to be exact, a handbag full of plastic explosives. Maybe, but this stuff is brand new. Oh. You know, you'll never be able to write your story now. I don't care. I've got what I want. Huh? Just tell me one thing, Georges. Is our life together always going to be this crazy? <laughs> <laughs>